I'll be showing 10 new features in OneNote. This includes the rejuvenated OneNote desktop, Mac, web, and iOS. I'm so excited I've even got on my OneNote cape. So let's get started. My one and only OneNote. The first new feature is maybe the most important one, and that is making sure everyone knows that desktop OneNote is coming back, and it's actually already back into the installs for Office 365. The OneNote team made an announcement in late 2019. Now it's fully rolled out. So the OneNote desktop, and I'll pull this up really quick, the one that many of you know and still use, this is coming back to Office 365 and will be pre-installed. So it is not going away. They've even added a couple of little features like dark mode and what I'll show in just a minute, the OneNote feed. That also means if you go to office.com right here and you go to install Office, OneNote desktop is back in the Office desktop install. And we're gonna be adding a lot more updates to OneNote Desktop in the near future, so stay tuned as we start rolling out all the great new updates. The second new feature is the OneNote feed, which lets you roam your notes all over the place. So I'm here at office.com, and I'm gonna switch over to Outlook for the web. I'm here in Outlook for the web, and I'm gonna to go to the upper right, and you're gonna see this little OneNote icon, and that is the OneNote feed. We'll click it to open. Now what it does is this feed has all of my notes, sticky notes, it has Samsung notes, and as I'll we'll talk about in a moment, even OneNote pages, all in one place. So it's really handy to roam your notes everywhere. I can add a note here. So if I click add note, I can type something out. I can choose a color. I can go down here and I can highlight some things and, and bold and do whatever I need to do. And I can easily add a sticky note. But what's nice is I can filter these things right here. I can also search. So if I want to search for the word video, I can do that. And here's a couple of different notes that come up in that place. I can also right click on a note and I can copy the content or delete it. The best part is this roams into different places. So for example, I'm going to go to OneNote desktop, which we just talked about and show where it shows up there. I'm here in OneNote desktop and you're going to see there's a little sticky notes button right here. That is your feed. Click this. And there is my feed. You can see the new one that I just added right here. It also works in the web. Here I am in OneNote for the web. There's a feed button right here. And you can see it shows up. This also shows up on iPhone, iPad, Android, OneNote for Windows 10 and Mac. So the OneNote feed roams everywhere to bring all your notes into one place. The third new feature is that now OneNote pages are surfaced in the OneNote feed. So I'm here in OneNote desktop and I'm gonna create a new page. New page for roaming my notes feed. I'm gonna paste some stuff in here. Here's a bunch of information about links for the inclusive classroom. So I've added this new page. And you'll see immediately in the notes feed, it adds a note right here. And it says what section it's coming from, which is the tips section. But if I go back into OA or OneNote on the web or any other place, now this page opens as well in my feed. So let's switch back to Outlook Web. Here I am in Outlook Web, and you'll see this new page for roaming my feed just showed up right here. Now, if I click this, it will open it up in OneNote in the web, watch. So I have immediate access to launch that page right here in OneNote for the web. So it makes it so easy to roam all of your stuff around and really have everything in one place so your notes travel with you. And if I wanna filter on just OneNote pages, I can do that, so I drop the filter. Now I'm just seeing my three OneNote pages, and if I wanna open that back up, it's very easy to do. I can even right click and get a copy of a link to that OneNote page, or I can open it up directly in OneNote or remove it. The fourth new feature is improved integration between Notes and Outlook for the web. So I have an email here and I need to make sure I look at the new TPS report cover sheets. I'm gonna highlight this and let go. You're gonna see this little menu pops up with some choices and one of them now is add note. So let's click add note. It adds that note with the title. I'm gonna highlight it, we'll bold it, I will click on the image down here in the lower right to insert image. Here's some images. There's my TPS report cover sheet. We'll click open. Ooh, that looks really good. Let's change the color to green and then I'm done. Now I have that TPS report cover sheet that was generated right from that chunk of text in my Outlook mail. The fifth new feature is page sorting on Mac and iPhone. So here's the Mac OneNote. You'll drop that down and we'll choose alphabetical sort and you'll see the pages sort alphabetically. Drop this down again, choose date created. Now they're sorted by the creation date. And last one, go to date modified and you can see when they were last modified. And I'll go back to just none, which puts it back to the way it was. Same thing on OneNote for iPhone. I'll go here and I'll go to the three dot menu and I'm gonna tap sort pages. You'll see alphabetical, I'll tap that and it'll be alphabetical A to Z. 
I can go back here and tap sort pages and I can tap that alphabetical to sort in descending order. Go back again, tap on sort pages. I can choose date created. Go back again and sort of similar like before I can go sort pages and tap to go date created ascending descending or date modified ascending descending. This is coming to iPad as well very soon. The sixth new feature are new embedding partners for OneNote. And the first one is Pinterest. I'm here on my Pinterest site. I have lots of different boards. I'll drill into Teams and I'll find one here. Here's a fun one, my noise suppression in Teams meetings. Let's copy the address bar up top, go into OneNote, paste that link, hit the space bar, and it automatically We'll put that right here into OneNote. And now I can launch it right here and it takes me back to Pinterest. The second new embed partner is Canva. Canva has gotten really, really popular recently, especially with teachers. So I design a lot of my Pinterest cards here in Canva. And here's some of the ones that I've designed. Let's open up my OneNote math tools design. Okay, now I will go to the three dot menu in the upper right. I'll go down here and say, see all. And then we're gonna choose embed right here. Click embed. And then you want the smart embed link, choose copy, switch back to OneNote, paste your Canva link right here, hit the space bar to engage it. And there is your interactive Canva link. And I can get right back to Canva by just clicking this link and it launches my Canva design. The seventh new feature is retaining your ink settings across sessions in OneNote for the web. Normally when you close your session, it would lose your ink settings. So I'm here in OneNote for the web. I'll go to the draw tab and I'm gonna choose pen here for drawing and then I'm going to choose a color. So let's drop this down and choose a nice orange and I'm going to make it pretty thick here. So let's draw myself a nice little smiley face and then I'll be drawing a little arrow over here. Now let's say that I close my one up for the web session. Now I come back later, I'm going to load up my page. Now historically, if I went back to the draw tab, I would have to go and reset my nice thick orange settings. But in this case, all I need to do is click on the pen and I can keep drawing. Hey, look at that. It is the exact same settings that I had before. The eighth new feature are improvements to zooming and making it much easier and smoother to zoom around in OneNote for the web. Sometimes with inking in OneNote for the web, the zooming get a little janky. So if I want to zoom, I'm going to click here and I'm just going to pinch and zoom. And look how nice and smooth that is. It's really nice on the ink. I can scroll around. It's very similar to how I would use OneNote Desktop or OneNote for Windows 10. The ninth and 10th new features are both OneNote Class Notebook and Teams integrations that are focused on our education customers. And the ninth new feature is integrating Class Notebook into the Teams Insights to see for class activity. So if I have assignments with OneNote I've made, I'm gonna go up here to the Insights tab. And if you don't yet have the Insights tab like you see here, it's really easy. Just click the plus tab, search for Insights, and then save it, and it will appear just like you see here. And I'll drill into Student Activity. Now I have some activity here. I'm gonna filter the drop down here and look at yesterday when I had some OneNote activity. Now what I do is I go to All Activities, and I drop this down, and there's a new option that says OneNote, and it's in preview. I'm gonna click this. Now it filters just on the OneNote activity happening in my class, and this is in the class notebook. So if I hover over Marsha Davenport, I can see she made some edits in the physical science notebook, and you see the notebook, and then the class notes section, and then the lesson summary page. So I can go here and see exactly where she was touching that notebook. I go down to Susanna Snow. She was making edits, and she was working in the projects section, I can see. And so it's really easy to get a sense of what was happening in that class notebook through this insights page. And this is added recently and we hope to expand it in the future. The 10th and final new feature are improvements to assignments with class notebook in Teams. Specifically when you're trying to make assignments with just reading content, we're making that more efficient. So I'm gonna go to assignments and I'll click on create assignment. Okay, I filled out the details of the assignment. Now what I'm gonna do is go to add resources and I'll select Class Notebook to attach the reading page. We'll drill into the content library, that's where I have this page stored, and we'll go into Readings. And then we'll select Algebra History, click this and click Attach. Now here's the new feature, this checkbox, Assign Page for Students to Read but Not Edit. So what this does is, it will put a link to this page that'll go directly to the content library. So instead of assigning a page to every single student in the class, which is just a page to read, 
This assignment will have a link that goes directly to this page so it saves space and that page is read only and it's always located in that same spot. So we will click this here to check it on. And note, now it disables all the places to distribute the page because it's really just gonna leave that link directly to the content library and it says students can't edit. And we'll click done. Okay, now we will click assign. Now we'll switch over to Alex, the student, and show what it looks like for him. Okay, here is Alex and you'll note that there's a little card link right here. I can click to view the assignment or I can go into assignments up here, which I'll do. And there's this history of algebra assignment. I will click this. Now I'm gonna click this, algebra history. Note that it pulls up this page which lives in the content library. So I can read this now just like I normally would, but it's just a single page that is in that content library. You can see here, there's the content library link. And if I go into my class notebook, here's this algebra history page that that assignment is linked to. So it's just kind of a nice way to save some space and not distribute a page to every single student if you don't want to. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest videos I'll be releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell to keep notified for all the latest posts.